How's it going y'all? My name is Doe and in this video I'm talking about the Warp Hike and a few different Savagery builds which Savagery to sell on Dauntless that does pretty insane damage if you have a wound going. So at plus 6, Savagery does 100% damage versus wounded parts. And we're playing the Warp Hike so the Warp Hike can wound with the left click so uh, it's going to be a pretty good time. Now in this build video I'll be having a few different builds that are pretty similar but they have some minor changes that can be pretty impactful in certain fights, at least for me. So for the most part, the main thing in these builds that won't really change is you have plus six conduit, overpower, rage hunter, and savagery. Those perks will not really change at all. Other perks will, such as either attunement being plus six, that won't, that won't say the same, you'll have conditioning on some builds. And by the way guys, if you want to use the warp hike to wound really quickly, for one, use acidic. So just for any of the slots, doesn't really matter which one, like pop out the cell and put in a acidic in the technique slot and then pop a insight tonic and you will wound like a madman. Now the downside of having acidic is you won't really break that many parts because it cuts your part damage in half. So in my builds I don't use acidic too much because breaking parts is very important for getting quick kill times. Like it's really important you can basically chain stagger by breaking parts. With acidic you can't really do that because breaking parts is very hard when your part damage is cut in half. Now, initially, I was just going to make one build and be like, hey, here's a Warp Hike build, go ham. But I found that playing the one build on all the behemoths wasn't the best thing for me. I wasn't having the best time. I wasn't able to do certain things because of my build. I was being limited by my perks and my perk selection versus certain behemoths. So I decided to change that. Now, the first behemoth I fought was Rage Tell Nasher. And for this, I had the Savage Wellspring for my Warp Hike as the special. And my mod was Lightweight Haft or Shaft. It's one of those. Now for the gear in this build, I mostly have pieces that give me technique slots and utility slots because of how the stats and the cell slots work in this build, but my perks are pretty freaking strong. I have plus six Aetheric Attunement, Conduit, Overpower, Predator, Rage Hunter, and Savagery. So in this build, I have six plus six perks, which with all these perks, the way they are, it's a pretty good build, especially for solo play. And a really important part of this build and all the builds in this video is Savagery. So Savagery is a cell that, like I said, you get more damage versus wounded parts. But you have to first wound the parts. And to help me in doing that, I'm using an Insight Tonic on every single fight in this video. Mostly because it makes wounding faster, which is very nice. So Insight Tonic increases your wound damage by 40%, which all that means is it increases the rate at which you wound parts. It doesn't actually give you more damage versus wounded parts. It just makes wounding parts faster. That's it. So I like it a lot. It's very nice for quality of life. And it just it speeds up the process very quickly. And to further increase that process versus Rage Tail, I had the lightweight shaft, is what it's called. And it makes it so whenever you're charging with the warp hike, which to charge you just run forward and you hold shift and left click. If you land that on a part, it's a critical strike guaranteed. So using that with Insight Tonics, my wound damage was freaking crazy. And doing that with Acidic is actually like a, it's like a 1k crit wound, which is insane. But without Acidic, it's like 600, which is still really, really good. So that makes my wound time very, or it makes my wound rate very quick. So I, I really enjoy that, especially on this fight. It made wounding all the parts very easy. And once the parts are wounded, you just go ham. You just right click for days. And when you can, be sure to use your Savage Wellspring if you're using that special in this in this sort of fight, because that gives you 25% crit chance for a duration depending on the size of the missile when you use it. And that is basically cunning on baby steroids, because cunning is 15% crit chance, and that aura gives you 25% crit chance. The downside is it takes forever to cast, so you have to be safe. I suggest using it during Nashers and Rage. If you run away, just pop it and then it'll come towards you, do a tail swipe most of the time, and you just go ham. After killing Rachel Nasher, I went to fight Shockter Nazaiga, and that fight did not go smooth whatsoever. I killed it, but it wasn't a it was not a pretty sight. And the reason is Shockter Nazaiga attacks way more frequently than Rachel does. So to counteract that, I swapped up my build a little bit. I changed out my chest piece for a cool shot chest piece and my feet for rift soccer feet. The reason is the whole point of doing that was to get conditioning. I wanted conditioning into my build to have more stamina regen, to be able to dodge attacks and just, you know, not get washed completely. And it worked out pretty good. I was able to dodge all the attacks. I was never 
stamina drained enough to where I couldn't really dodge. And it was a pretty clean fight after doing that. It, it changed the way that the fight played out pretty drastically. And other than that, the only thing I changed was my modification for my Warpike, which instead of having the lightweight shaft, I had changed it out for the balanced spearhead, which increases damage dealt by 3% each time piercing and harvesting attacks are alternated resets upon combo in. So piercing and harvesting attacks is basically your left and then your right click. So the most optimal damage in this kind of you know build is to do a starting left click and then right click and then alternate between that and basically that's really high damage output. Just make sure you start the combo off with a left click and then alternate between your right clicks as well because that will give you up to 5 stacks which is 15% extra damage and it's pretty good. Also this mod is good on behemoths that have pretty big downtime if you break apart or if you stagger it. And Shocked and Zyga is pretty much a behemoth that does that you know, pretty often. If you stagger it, it's down for a pretty long time. And if you break apart, it's down for a decent amount of time. So that makes it so you can get a pretty good combo in during that duration of its downtime. Oh, and one small thing. You might see me dodging with Shocked's attacks. And to clarify that, that's a pretty dangerous way to dodge. And the safest way is to dodge into the attacks. Just to, you know, just to be clear on that. The reason I dodge away from the attacks is because I like to position myself at the face of Shockjaw instead of like at the side. So if you're new to the fight, I strongly suggest dodging into attacks and not dodging away from them. But uh, hey, you do you. Okay, we're flying to the last behemoth, which is Heroic Koshai. And for this behemoth, I tried three different builds. The first build was the Ragetail build, second Shockjaw, and the last build was a variation that I used because the first two were not working out to my favor. And the main reason why is because I was using Predator and I kept getting hit on Koshai. Since Koshai is a very, um, very unique behemoth that has certain attacks that basically prevent dodging, such as Thorns, and also whenever it goes Aether mode and has its uh, blue bubble, it's like blue wind bubble around it, that prevents you from getting stamina back as long as you, as long as you remain inside it. So those two reasons made it to where I kept getting hit and I kept losing Predator. So to change that, I got rid of Predator. And the thing I swapped it out for was Adrenaline, which is a new cell in Dauntless that gives you 1.8% increased damage for every 10 stamina missing. So I actually had to swap out my chest piece and my leg piece for Scrave Gear. I have the Scrave Chest and the Scrave Legs, which both give Adrenaline. For the chest piece, I have a Feather Slot, and for the feet, I have a Utility Slot. And for the Feather Slot, I put in Endurance, and the reason for that Endurance gives you more max stamina, which effectively increases the damage you can get with Adrenaline, because now you have 40 more stamina added into that conversion. On top of that, depending on what Slayer level you are, at level 42 in Mastery for Slayer Mastery, you get 10 max stamina total. And that, plus 100, which is your base stamina, plus 40, which is from Endurance plus 3, gives you 150, and 150 stamina basically gives you 27% damage, if you're at zero stamina, which is very easy to get to with the Warpike, by the way. Warpike drains stamina with your right click and your left click combo. So it is no hard time at all getting that. And the upside is you can't lose this damage from getting hit, which is a very nice thing. Predator, if you get hit, you lose the damage threshold. You lose the damage bonus. So Adrenaline is like, hey, you can get hit, it's fine. So I like it on certain fights, especially Koshai, since Koshai there are mechanics that I legit can't dodge out of, such as thorns. You cannot dodge out of thorns. Like I said, it's not a great time. I'm not happy with that mechanic, but it is what it is currently. So to, you know, counteract that, I bring adrenaline over predator, because if I get hit, it doesn't matter. I still have a pretty good amount of damage because the warpike is draining stamina all the time. So it works out. And the last thing I want to talk about will be my mods and my special for the Warpike on this fight. So I chose the Concussive Payload, which is a missile which can interrupt Behemoth during unstable attacks. And Koshai's unstable attack can basically be triggered pretty often if you just walk away from it when it's uh, you know backing up, when it's backing up from you, walk away from it, and most of the time it'll leap at you. When that happens, just boop it, and you get a really long window for freaking overpower, and it's a good time. And for my mod, I have the Balanced Spearhead because you just, you know, left click, right click, get up to 15% extra damage by rotating those. It's, I like it. It's very good damage. And to me, it's the best mod for this fight for my playstyle on Koshai. So those are my mods. 
But guys, thank you for watching the video. It's a longer video than normal. Let me know if you like the format. And if you want, you can check out my live stream on Twitch. I'm a very interactive streamer, and I'm also a Donald's partner. You can ask me questions while I'm live, get a hunt in. And other than that, if you want, you can use my Epic Games supporter credit code, which is Odo, in the Epic Games store. And making purchases using that code helps me out. But anyway, y'all, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!